What is 32-bit in the context of audio recording? No doubt you've heard the term, but what does it actually mean? How does it compare to 24 and 16-bit? And how can you use it to your advantage? All of this to come, but if you're new around here, I'm Harv. And I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff on these videos. And as always, I've timestamped every chapter in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want. And these videos are not brought to you by any, you know, company or sponsor of any kind except for maybe my Patreon backers. The idea with my Patreon is that it's completely non-profit. Any funds from Patreon, I buy gear and then review the gear in an unbiased way and then give the gear to my backers. Simple as that. So if you enjoy these videos, if you like winning gear, consider becoming a backer. It's just the cost of a cup of coffee. Anyway, onward. The first thing to say is that 32-bit float is truly amazing. And I'm sure you're aware or, you know, you know, may have heard that it's better than 16-bit and 24-bit, but you won't believe by how much. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's back up. What is 32-bit float? In short, 32-bit is a type of data format used for capturing audio. You know, when we capture, you know, uh, physical sound waves by microphones and then, you know, the digital conversion happens, it's stored as numerical data. The bit depth of an audio format determines how accurately we can capture that sound. So really higher bit depths mean more data, more dynamic range and more detail. The more standard bit depths like 16 and 24 bits that you'll see everywhere use a fixed point system. And this means that there are limits to the loudness that you can capture. Passing zero decibels full scale will result in clipping. You know, this is really commonly known. And if you add heavy processing, you could experience things like distortion. By the way, throughout this video, when I say decibels or dB, I'm referring to dBFS, dB full scale. Just, I just don't want to keep having to say dBFS. 32-bit, on the other hand, uses a floating point system. Now, WTF is a floating point system, right? Well, with a fixed point system like you get with 16 and 24-bit, 0 dB is the maximum volume before you'll experience clipping. But with floating point, that clipping point moves continuously within a rather large range below and above 0 dB. At this point, I feel like we need a little bit more context to really understand what the differences are. So now let's take a look at 16-bit, i.e. CD quality, and compare it with 32-bit. So 16-bit has a theoretical dynamic range of 96 decibels. This means it can represent a range of sound levels from the softest to the loudest spanning 96 decibels. It sounds like a lot, but on the other hand, 32-bit float provides an incredibly wide dynamic range, as I mentioned. It offers a theoretical dynamic range of, get this, over 1,500 decibels. Yep, I'm not joking. This means it can capture sound levels from the faintest sousson of a whisper on a distant wind to the most explosive, girthy, guttural, thunderous explosion imaginable. If you're interested, 24-bit has a theoretical dynamic range of 144 decibels. But I'm keen to test this. I want to see what happens when I record something, clip the hell out of it, and then just, you know, see if I can recover that in post. Let's do it. And this is how I did it. I used my Tascam Porter Capture X8, which of course records 32-bit float. And I needed a repeatable sound that I could, you know, record and measure. So I chucked my AKG C414 mic in front of a speaker and just played one of my songs. As you can see from the meter, it is slammed. The gain on the X8 is maxed out. And for reference, the actual recorded song sounds like this. <laughs> Of course, I did one recording in 24-bit and then I switched over to 32-bit float and then I put them into Logic and that's when things got interesting. On the top you can see the 24-bit file and below you can see the 32-bit. The 32-bit already looks more dynamic and this is a theme. The lower bit depths do tend to give a little bit more gain. You know, of course I kept the gain settings exactly the same on the Tascam. 
I tried to attenuate both of them and then I exported them and popped them back into Final Cut and they look like this. As you can see, despite my efforts, the 24-bit file still has that kind of brick wall look to it. You know it's going to sound nasty. And the 32-bit looks pretty good. But of course, you want to hear them right. Well, here's a quick blast of the 24-bit. <laughs> And then the 32-bit. And are you surprised that the 32-bit version didn't sound cleaner? Well, I was, and that's when I realized that actually it was my fault by maxing out the preamp gain on the X8, I was just basically clipping the preamp. So I went back, I retested, I lowered the preamp gain, I increased the volume of the source material that I was recording, and in short, this fixed it. As you can see, lowering the volume of the 24-bit version still looks horrific and it sounds bad too. However, the 32-bit version, I can lower the volume, recover all that detail, and it sounded good. And actually, this leads me really nicely onto my next section. Something to bear in mind, and just to keep this in real world perspective, the dynamic range that 32-bit float can capture is way beyond what the human ear can perceive. I think the human, average human's uh, hearing range is around 120 decibels, and beyond that uh, you're looking at the pain threshold. So with 32-bit audio you have an enormous range to deal with, far beyond what you'll probably ever need or will be able to hear. Another really important thing to note is that the true dynamic range that you'll be able to capture with 32-bit really hinges on partly the gear that you're using and its capabilities, the environment that you're shooting in, plus the overall noise floor of your signal chain. Nevertheless, 32-bit still provides just insane flexibility and headroom if you did need to use processing to clean up uh, a recording. So to sum up, what are the main reasons for choosing 32-bit over the other bit depths? Firstly, and kind of obviously, for better dynamic range. With 32-bit float, we can accurately capture both very soft and very loud sounds without loss of detail or distortion. In turn, this means extra headroom, almost infinite headroom actually. The floating point format provides more headroom above 0 dB, meaning it can capture peaks that go way beyond the limits of 16 and 24 bit. You can also expect extra robustness of your audio files. When we apply effects and adjustments, each process can introduce small errors or rounding issues, However, 32-bit float minimizes these errors due to the aforementioned reasons. Finally, you have gain flexibility. With 32-bit's floating point, you can amplify or attenuate the level of the recorded audio in your software without introducing errors. As if you were traveling back in time and changing the gain level you recorded the original audio at. But of course, not forgetting that there are other physical limitations to this, such as, you know, overloading preamp circuits or the noise floor of your signal chain. One thing you might hear people say, and something I'm expecting people to leave in the comments section, is that 32 bit audio is pointless because wherever it ends up, it will end up being downsampled, whether it be Spotify or through YouTube. And to those people, I refer back to the aforementioned points. At the end of the day, it's not about the fidelity of your source material when playing it back, but with the huge benefits that you get when, you know, when producing the audio, when recording and processing. Some may argue that it's not worth using because the file sizes are bigger. And yeah, they, they, they are, of, of course they are. But for the benefits you get, I think it's a really small price to pay. So in case you couldn't tell, I'm completely sold on 32-bit float. It's just such a versatile and high quality data format. And when you're using it, it just gives you such, such amazing fidelity and dynamic range. And then, you know, these amazing robust files to work with. That's why I love it. That's why I'm switching all of my recording devices over to ones that support 32-bit. For example, I have switched my mobile recording device over to the Tascam X8 
And for home, I'm using the Solid State Logic SSL12 audio interface, both of which I reviewed recently, and I would recommend watching both of those videos, of course. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I, I wanna hear from you. Do you use 32-bit? What's your experience been like? Has it been similar to mine? Let me know, I'll see you down in the comments section. I've now made over 300 of these videos about audio and video of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.